Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show you my method of putting the binding onto your quilting project. Now, this is a fabric book, so my soft book, and it is the same method that I used for all of my other soft books. So I have a pink soft book, a purple fabric soft book, and a blue fabric soft book. Okay, so this one is obviously my orange, and I really love it. I love these colors. Green and orange are my two favorite colors. So if you ever want to send me happy mail, <laughs> um, and I like more medium to pastel because you can see there's a lot of warm going on in this um, but not I don't really go in for like dark depressing kind of colors but I like medium pastels medium earth tone warm kind of colors like that now if it's jewel tone colors I really like those and you know jewel tones are a different category altogether so, but that's, let me start talking on this. So I'm Marcia. Welcome to Markets of Sunshine. Thank you for being here with me. And I teach you all kinds of easy sewing crafts, paper crafts here on my channel. So if you're looking for easy, doesn't have to be beginner, but if you're a beginner, that's great. This is a great place to start, but you can be an experienced um, paper crafter and sewer, but my style is just easy and I love variety. So if you're tired of the same old, same old, same old topics <laughs> with paper crafting and junk journaling and hidden paper clips and all those things and oh let's just make hidden paper clips 50,000 ways or oh let's just make a junk journal 50,000 ways. If you're tired of that then you're gonna like my channel because I am all about the spice of life and variety. So if that's something that you want to have more of in your life, then subscribe to my channel. I'm all about bringing the sunshine in. And be forewarned, fair warned, <laughs> I do talk about my business, Markets of Sunshine. If you type that in, you'll find me all over the internet. I do have a business. I have a shop on Etsy. I have my own website, marketsofsunshine.store. Um, so I do talk about that because that's what helps support my channel. So, um, I try to do it in a friendly way, <laughs> and so I hope you will um, not be uh, offended by that, but everything will be in the description box below. So let's get started. Now I take the length of my project and the width, the height of the project, the depth, and then I measure that. So all four sides you want to measure, and then you will cut your binding strips a little bit longer than that. So don't cut it exactly that length and height, cut it a little bit longer. So I generally try to give myself maybe like two inches, I'm not talking feet, when I say a little bit longer, <laughs> I'm talking inches. And so that's what I did with this. So I'm using two different um, fabrics. This comes from the Laura Lee Designs, and um, I have kits in my shop where I um, have bought the fabrics and the panels, and then I've quilted them, got them started for you, but put them in a kit for you to finish. You could make a needle book, you can make a fabric soft book, you can make a wall hanging with them. They're absolutely adorable. Um, I have a one that I am making into a pillow for my daughter. That one is turning out really, really sweet and adorable. So this panel on the front of my book is from her collection as well. I have a whole garden theme. I have a country life theme um, in my uh, kits that I offer. And so this is definitely uh, garden and home life, country life combination. So this is what I used for my cover. I used that little panel. Okay, so what I do is, you're, or what you'll need to do too, if you're going to make this with me and follow along and sew with me, I hope that you will. So this combines hand quilting, the quilt as you go method, 
this combines our slow stitching and it combines our hand embroidery all wrapped up into one little neat package in the project okay so you take your fabrics and you're going to put right sides together so you turn that over and I do mine a little different everybody has their own little method whatever works for you you do and then I sew it on the machine you could do it by hand but I like to do it on the machine when it comes to the binding and then I'm going to do the same thing with this top row and so I do the two longest sides first this is just my method okay and when you start your sewing you don't start at the very beginning you come in about what is that three inches maybe and you start sewing here and go down same thing up here start three inches and come down so then when you're going to connect these end pieces then you'll be able to um, do that with ease and I'm going to get to that so I'm going to leave the ends open but I'm first going to sew here first sew here now what I do differently is I leave it open like this as you see then after I've sewed one edge now I come and I fold it over and I get my handy dandy little iron and I press it but some people do that and they press it first and then they open it up but I, I do mine the opposite way okay so I will do that first so that is step one and then we'll move on to step two all right so here's the inside and this has already been sewn all the way down both sides okay and then you turn it over and then you fold it and now you are pinning it into place and then I will take it to the machine and then sew it right here about a quarter inch away from this edge all the way down okay and then when I put the other binding piece on the ends here then I'm going to turn the, 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 the corners here and then the extra piece whatever I cut off one of those will come and I might have to splice the two together I'm not sure yet but anyway so isn't that going to be cute and then that's the binding and the only thing I did here the top I had come down far enough when I did those little woven wheels but down here I'm going to be stitching right under that woven wheel and then this one over here um, is, is underneath of it I don't know so I'm going to try to figure out if I can somehow tuck it under I'm not for sure if I can do that or not bring it down a little bit I don't know so then it would be really short so unfortunately but I'm thinking I might come along here and maybe trim this I haven't figured that part out yet but at any rate that's what it's gonna look like in that cute I really like it I think it looks really pretty together all right so let me go sew that and I'll be right back okay so here we are the two sides front and back nice and sewn and look at how pretty that looks all right so now what I do is I just cut off the ends and this is my I don't know if it's because I, I have some form of anyway some kind of form of dyslexia I don't know but anywho it's always too confusing to me so what I'm gonna do what I always do is I take and I sew and turn it and then these corners will be like this okay they're just gonna be like that but I what I'd like to do is I take this end and I fold it over so I have a nice in, finished it's not a raw edge okay so I hope I hope <laughs> I hope you're following me on that all right but when I come back and show you but anyway that's what I do so I fold the end, end and I do the same thing on this end I'll leave enough and then fold it over you know you that'll be sewn and then I will have the two pieces and then this corner lays just like that and it looks just as nice in my opinion okay 
you have a squared off little corner. And if you wanted to put a button over this, you could do that. I mean, it doesn't look bad. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine. And it is going to turn out just as nice. All right, so let me go sew those two edges together. All right, I think it turned out really nice. Look at the sides, inside and out. I love it. Very, very nice. Very easy to finish off. And this makes a nice little cover for my next little fabric book. And wait till you see what we're going to put inside of this one for pages. It's really going to be fun, and I know you're going to love it. Let me show you a sneak peek of the next video series I'm going to be doing with you. Okay, here's a sneak peek of the next series, and you're going to love it. And we're going to make these together, and you're going to have to wait till the next video to find out what it is. So make sure you subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss any notifications of new videos that I've uploaded. And then we're also going to continue working in our new fabric soft book. And we're going to make a new series for this. And this is all coming up July, which is just a few days away. And the same thing with this series, just a few days away. Now, let me show you what is also coming up here on my channel. Okay, I'm going to take you on the messy craft room tour today, and we're going to transform this room and get it back into shape. And as you can see, it's kind of gotten a little bit out of hand, and I just have stuff all over the floor, and the closet isn't too bad, but oh my goodness, the floor, the floor, the floor, the floor. So I don't want things to be spilling over into my living room anymore. So we have got to get this craft room tamed and whipped back into shape. So I had mentioned before that my husband's building me that table. Very slow process because he still works full time and it's just a matter of finding the time. So in the meantime, my daughter has graciously agreed to come and help me, and we are going to go through this stuff, and I'm going to finally organize things, and all my junk journal supplies are going to be going into one spot, and my sewing supplies are going to be the things that are going to be more accessible to me because I have a lot of my junk journal products out and my sewing projects, samples and completed projects are um, on the shelves as you can see, but just needs a little bit of organizing, reorganization. And so I can't do it all by myself. I definitely need help. And so I am going to take you with me on this tour of reorganizing, revamping, going through everything and major um, moving stuff around kind of a, a project. Uh, there's so much, as you can see, stuff is stacked on top of things. I can't get to things. Um, this rolling bookcase that my husband built for me, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, if it's going to stay. Um, I'm trying to maybe get where all my junk journal supplies can go on, my paper crafting supplies can go on this one unit, and then see what I have as far as my sewing supplies, my scrap um fabrics, you know, all that kind of a thing. And because I have fabric in here, I have fabric in here, and, you know, lots of paper items here. These top two shelves, I don't even get into those things as far as, far as supplies go. Down here on the bottom, I can't get down and get to any of that. So, I mean, this is going to be like a couple of months 
worth of work that's going to go into this. And so what I'm going to have her do is bring things out and that for me to go through. And then when I've decided what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to donate or sell, then that will um, have, a, you know, it, it will get a place. So either in my garage um, or friends, local thrift stores, a lot of the homeschool groups. I'm going to try to look those up again and donate to them. So I hope you'll follow along with me and come with me on this journey. And if your craft room is as messy as mine, then maybe it'll be some inspiration for you to get it back under control because it's definitely gotten out of hand. This shelf here is going to go up on the wall in the living room.